Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own custom graphics on a Raspberry Pi GUI to use for your escape room puzzles. I've been having so much fun still playing with the Pi Simple GUI module for Python and just really enjoying all the different features, testing them out, especially with the idea of creating custom touchscreen interfaces for escape room puzzles. As I've mentioned before, I get really tired of the same old, same old when it comes to entering codes into uh, little three and four cylinder padlocks or using the typical keypad deadbolt to get out of one room and into another. Pi Simple GUI is the perfect solution to create simple touchscreen interfaces that you can use to trigger events in your escape room. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take the Pi Simple GUI module tweak it with your own custom graphics so that it'll match the look and feel of your escape room, and then put it all together so that you can incorporate puzzles and anything that you can come up with with this motif and create a puzzle that'll be memorable, impactful, and most of all fun for the people going through your escape room. And probably one of the greatest features is because it's software and not hardware, you can refresh it, change it up, repurpose it, use it in a different escape room, or even reload the window over and over again to give you a new experience and a new interface even in the same room and scenario. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you watched my last video that I did on an escape room counter or dial puzzle, you'll recognize the interface that I created for that. Though it works perfectly the way that I wanted it to with each button triggering different digits and making it a little more challenging to solve, it kind of looks plain and boring. And so one of the big upgrades that I was looking for is to be able to add my own custom background. Now I didn't think this was going to be that difficult to accomplish. I thought there would already be existing mechanisms or software options to do that very easily. I realized however that I would would need to change up the format a little bit so instead of doing these buttons below text boxes basically what I did is turn the buttons into the display as well so you'll click the actual digits and accomplish the same logic the same effect as you would by having the buttons below the digit it's a little more organic that way you simply tap the digits to make the changes but of course you can still see it looks quite blocky and you can see the background of the individual button colors the background on all of the words and TK enter which the default Pi Simple GUI module is based upon doesn't have an easy Easy option to make transparency happen between these windows. It looks okay, but what I'm really looking for is something like this. Something that matches the theme and motif of an escape room. It has custom graphics, it has uh, different fonts with effects and all of those kinds of things. And so this is the end result of what I'm aiming for. And as you can see, I accomplished it. So how do I get there? The first thing we need to do is to install the Pi Simple GUI QT module instead of the standard Pi Simple GUI. Now you can do that the same way you always would with a pip install. And what that does is load the module or the port of Pi Simple GUI that is based on the QT platform instead of the TK Inter platform, which means that we have new options, including background graphics, which are a standard part of that platform. Another thing that we're gonna need to do is include a custom theme here, and we're gonna use that theme to choose the color of the buttons or the background color of the buttons, as well as the font color if you wanna change that. If we don't do that, it becomes really difficult to change it on the individual elements. So we're gonna create it, and then we're gonna call that new theme that we create. Now the logic that I used in this particular puzzle, I create a random sampling of original positions for those digits and a random code just for the sake of testing out the script. Now you can see here that I've commented out two text boxes. Those are the ones that I had above and below. And if I just run that and show you what it looks like. It's really kind of ugly text compared to what I have in the finished product. That's because you can see that colored background behind it. There isn't a way with the current Pi Simple GUI features to make that background transparent, which is what I was really hoping for. And after trying and trying and trying and trying, my wife finally suggested, why don't you just edit the background graphic to have that in it? And so that's what I ended up doing. As you can see here, having the background graphic include the letters and then putting the buttons on top of it. Now you can see I've changed the button 
color in this particular case and that's where the theme comes in and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit to find a complementary color. I played with the size of the buttons and with the padding of the buttons to get the spacing that I want so that the buttons occupy the middle third of the window and then the space on the top and bottom thirds. That gives you room to add other graphics or text in when you're creating your background image. The most important thing to declare that image is in the window creation or the window function that you're calling. You're going to include a reference here for background underscore image and give it the name of file that you're using. Now if you want to do it like this you have to make sure that the background file is in the same folder as the script and as long as that's the case it'll be loaded otherwise you have to draw a reference to the full path and location of that file. Now you can see here I also set the size for 800 by 480 which is the size of my Raspberry Pi touchscreen and once I load this on the Pi I'll have to enable this maximize command so that it fills the whole screen and gets rid of the taskbar. All of this code here is what happens when you push the different buttons and how the logic of that works. If you want to see that just refer back to the counter dial logic puzzle video that I did and I run through all of the different logic and the way that it works. Now if we run this with the background and not edited you can see here that you just get the buttons in the middle of the screen using that background image. So how did I get that color and how did I get the text onto the background? Well I use a program called GIMP which is just a free Photoshop type program. Of course you could use Photoshop or many other different kinds of graphic programs. So I found some background images off Google and then I'm going to just change the canvas size on that image to be the 800 by 480 that I need. Now it's important that your graphics and everything that you're doing matches the window size that you eventually want so you're not going to have any unexpected formatting issues. And then once I've positioned that where I want it, I can now put layers onto that background. Now the first layer that I'm going to put on here, I'm going to do it here as though it's the instructions or the heading that I want to put on this window, but then I'll change the color and show you how it is that we're going to match it to the color that we would like. So here, like I say, you've got enter code, maybe that's what you're going to put as the header, or you you're maybe going to put a clue in there or something like that. That's all you'd have to do. Lay it out in the top third or the bottom third and of course it will not interfere with the buttons. But if you click the button for the color of that text and then you use the color chooser button you can see here that you can pick a particular color that's found in the background. Now what you're aiming for is a color that's complementary to that whole image so you can play around with a few different things and just see how well that particular color turns up. As you can see here once I select that text and turn it into that color you can really kind of see how well it complements the background. Now in something with such a mosaic of colors it's not going to be possible to make these buttons blend in perfectly but by choosing a complementary color it's going to look a lot better than using something unrelated to the background image. So I play around here until I get a color that I feel comfortable with. This one's a little dark but maybe I find something a little lighter. Try that out and make sure I get something that I'm happy with. That looks pretty decent. So now how do I get that color into my Pi Simple GUI interface? Well, I go here and I choose the color that is selected. Now I accidentally selected the wrong color. So let's see what it looks like if I select just that. The default current color that I'm using, I copy that code. Here it's called HTML notation, but really it's the hexadecimal equivalent of that color. And so now all I need to do is copy that and paste it into my code back in the declaration of the theme. And I'm gonna put it in with the button. The second item in the tuple is the color of the background. You do need to leave the pound sign there in order to declare that it's a hexadecimal number. As you can see, when you load it up, the color is much more complementary than what a black or the default kind of dark blue looks like, and it looks much better and much more part of the theme or motif of the entire interface. Now, of course, once you have that color figured out, you can come back here to your image. You can put in as much text or additional graphics, anything that you would want in order to dress up and make that interface look exactly the way that you want it. By using an image manipulation tool like GIMP or Photoshop, you can add unlimited options and really dress it up or make it look as fantastic as you'd like. That really adds to the look and feel and experience of the escape room itself. It just feels like a level of detail and care and quality that you want to accomplish. Now, I'm not a graphic designer, so if I was doing this for a real escape room, I would have a graphic designer do it for me. And of course, you can always find someone local or go online and use a service like 99designs or Fiverr and have someone who does that for a living instead create the content for you and the quality will match as opposed to trying to stumble your way through it if you're not that comfortable with photo editing tools or graphic design. If we load up this sample background that I just created here, I'm just going to reference the name of it as I've saved it as a PNG file. You want 
want your images to be PNG or GIF files. And as you can see here, my background, which maybe is not formatted perfectly, but it is incorporated and gives you the idea of how easy it is to swap it in for the original background that we used. So here's the finished look of that brick type background. I also did a finished look with a city roadscape and my personal favorite, a desert theme with the sand color buttons. As with other escape room puzzles I've shown you, this isn't meant to be the final product, but inspiration and a platform, a foundation for you to build your own puzzle idea on top of. Now you can see how easy it is to create custom backgrounds, incorporate them into the design of the interface, and then also color coordinate the buttons or other elements on the screen in order to get something that matches the overall color scheme or theme. I'd love to see what you come up with with these tools. And so if you have a design to share, send it to my email, my information's in the description below. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up so I'll know that this is the kind of thing you wanna keep seeing. Check back every week as I post new content every Saturday morning and give me some feedback. Let me know in the comments or send me an email and let me know things that you like, things that you'd change, or things that you'd like to see uh, in new projects down the road. I've got so many more projects on the go and I'm excited to bring them to you week after week as I get them completed in different stages to show you the progress and the journey. Until next time, in your escape room puzzles, don't be afraid to try something new and a little more high tech than those old school mechanisms. And don't be afraid to be balder.